Mother, my Aunt Rose's dog, can sleep anywhere. I've seen him sleep on the sidewalk, at the basketball court, even in the subway. But I never thought I'd see Hector sleeping on TV. My baby's on TV! My name is Eddie. I live in New York City, East Harlem to be exact. Here's where I go to school, PS72. School's tough, but it's a lot more fun ever since I got a teacher named Miss Tolliver. Miss Tolliver makes us keep a journal. And I want you to write about what you learned today. I took the idea and ran with it. Perfect, check up. Oh, hi, Eddie, come on in. Right next to that rectangle is a whole bunch of triangles. My mom has lots of names for this mess, but I call it my files. Rosa was moving into a new apartment, and it was painting day. Do you think all my stuff's going to fit in here, Eddie? Aunt Rosa should have been in Miss Tolliver's class. Now, it was all about measuring go. areas, starting with some graph paper and our hands. And I want you to trace your hand very quickly. After you trace your hand, give me the area of your hand. Okay, my area of my hand is 79 square centimeters. My hand is 98 square units. 112. 83 <laughs> square centimeters. I have 78 square centimeters. Good for you, and I like it. You're all giving me the square units. Okay, now. Who can tell us then, what is area? Area is squares inside a figure. Area is the space inside of a figure. Okay, good. And when you tell someone then the area for a figure or for a room or so on, how do you give that area to them? What kind of measurement do you use when you present it? Um, I think you could use square units. Good for you. Now say I have this little square here, and I say it represents one square foot. Does anyone have any idea what that means? Each side of the square is one foot long. Good for you. All right. So each side of the square is one foot, and that's why the area of that one unit would be one square foot. OK, now, how would you easily calculate the area for something shaped like this? You'll count the square units. OK, that's one way to do it. Or what's another way, Sebastian? Use the area formula. Length times width, good for you. OK, now, you know so much about area this morning that I think it's about time you all get your own apartments. And listen, I'm doing a good deal here. I'm giving you the furniture, too. Oh, yeah, man, you get the furniture for this apartment. <laughs> This is the floor plan for the apartment that you're going to create. All of the furniture that I give you will go into the apartment. You are going to have four rooms. Between each room, there must be a wall. You're going to calculate the area for your kitchen, your bathroom, your living room, your bedroom. And then I want to know the total area of your apartment. Go ahead and begin working. First, we had to divide our space into four rooms. Remember, you have to have four rooms. Then we had to make all the furniture fit. How are we going to go through the wall now? Like this. Miss Tyler. You can't fit all your furniture in. So what does it mean about your floor plan? Kind of rearranging. Or the kitchen could go to the side. So after you paste down your furniture yep. in the apartment, I want you to use the markers to show the shape of the room. That's neat. Get the area done. Let's go. We working together as a team. What are you going to have to do? So it's two, four, six. So let's take a look. We're going to start looking at some of the finished apartments. It was a lot of work, but I came up with a floor plan. This is the living room. This is the bathroom. And even though we all had the same amount of space, 
Everyone's place was different. And we were all set to move into our new apartment. Give them a nice hand. That's a nice apartment. OK, so just maybe adjust. OK? Whew. Look at all this stuff. Not even close to being done yet. Hey, baby. Ooh, Eddie, would you do me a favor and take care of Hector for me tonight? Take him to your house. I'm worried about him. It's kind of a distraction, too. I really have to get moved in by tomorrow morning. I wondered what she was going to do for our bed. <sighs> Please, don't remind me. In the old place it was built in, now I'm going to have to buy one. Can't really afford it. Oh, well. No biggie. Guess I'm just gonna have to sleep on the sofa. All right. That sofa didn't look very comfortable, and I wish there was something I could do about it. Then, as I was walking Hector home, it happened. All right, quiet, please. Quiet on the set. This one's for the history books, ladies and gentlemen. We need quiet this time, people. They were making a TV commercial for the Snooze Right Mattress Company. Good, all right. Roll camera. Rolling. Okay, scene three, take 58. Action! Okay, cut. We are getting there. Let's try one more time. All right. OK, people, once more, this is it. Scene three, take 59. OK, now just relax. Nice, easy, that's right. And action. Cut! Cut! You call that sleeping? That is not sleeping. Your eyes are closed, but you're not sleeping. You just lie there like a big finger. Yeah, but Francois, what's my motivation? You are tired. What else do you want? Please, don't make a career out of this. Just sleep. Possibly, doesn't anyone know how to sleep in this town anymore? Silencio! Mamma mia. Vittorio, throw some light over here. Che bello, Pucci. Now that is a sleeping. I have it. We change the concept. Sleep like a king is no good. Kings do not sleep. They, they fight wars, wear crowns, sit in big thrones. This mattress is for sleeping. You work like a dog. Why not sleep like one? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Voila! I have it. Sleep like a dog on the snooze ride. Eh? We must change the set into a dog house. Yes! <laughs> Said, let's get moving, people! Come on, boys, back to work. We got a relight here. Let's go. Go fish. All right, everyone, let's get moving! Uh, Francois, and what do you think about this? No, make it bigger. Look, uh, Francois wants the pooch. <laughs> You're replacing me with a dog. <laughs> Take a walk. What are you laughing at? OK, how about this one? No, it must be bigger. The light 
must be bright. Sunny bright. Sunny bright, that's a good stage name for Hector. Hector! Did we remember to put film in the camera this time? Film? Is it? You are going places, my friend. You are going to be a big star. No bone, bring him a steak. Only the best for Hector. Now tell me, would you like to meet my agent? Please, calm down, he's not a bad agent. Ah, bellissimo. Now put it in the doghouse. He is not Snoopy. How about lunch tomorrow, huh? I couldn't believe it. Hector was gonna be a star. I thought I'd see another normal face again. A set is an area that's occupied by the actors to tell their story. How fortunate it is that it has kept you stuck at this bar for the past three hours. If it weren't for a set, you wouldn't believe that you are where you're supposed to be during the time that the scene is taking place. And cut. Good. Bill, print it, please. My name is Ron Wilkinson. My job is an art director. Everything having to do with the look of the show, the art director's involved in. The art director is responsible for the construction of the sets with the effects people, with the construction people, with the painters, carpenters, electricians, cameramen. First contact, we had to design that little town we were in. That just doesn't appear. Someone has to design that and mathematically figure proportionally how everything will work in that. We often do miniatures of big things you see on the screen. In the world of Star Trek, the Enterprise is 947 feet long. The one that you see on screen is actually just five and a half feet. Hi, I'm Greg Jean, and you're in my garage, and we're in beautiful downtown Marina del Rey, right by the sea. Models are started normally through an art director and his art staff uh, generating some drawings or some sketches, and then we take it from there, figuring out how big the model has to be and the best way to make it on time. Measurements take a big part of our job. To make it look like the drawing in a bigger scale, we have to measure exactly and blow up in the correct ratio what we see on paper. Measurement comes into play quite a bit. If I knew nothing about measuring, I would not have my job five minutes. In order to draw any space, you have to know how big the space is in order to put what you're designing within that space. Behind us here is a Star Trek set. Math was used to calculate whether this set would fit inside this stage, for example. If the mathematical equations were wrong, the set wouldn't fit, we wouldn't be able to use it. Area as well. We have to make sure that linear footages are correct. We may have a console here, a chair there. If I design a big chair and put it in a little set, mathematically, the area-wise, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't look good to you on TV. my druthers, I'd rather work on the Klingon ships because we can get a lot dirtier and meaner with them. This is the Klingon mold, and to get this mold, we have to have a pattern, which is the basic thing you start with. This is the pattern of the Klingon ship. You can see this is basically wood, and all these little plastic pieces are added on. And it would take an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money to keep making these one at a time because a lot of them get blown up in the show. With the mold, all you have to do is put in the casting material, and 24 hours later, you have a finished ship ready to paint. This is one of the small molds. It's part of the Klingon engine mount. So you can see all the detail you have in the rubber mold, and then all the detail that you pick up in the nice hard resin. 
set is actually starting to paint some of these models. This one has just the base coat on, and then some of the other molds go right on the side here after we cut a hole opening. One day I saw a job on the board and thought I would inquire about it. At the time, I didn't know it was Paramount Pictures. I came to Paramount to apply for the position and got it. It was just a temporary six-month job, and I've been here ever since that. That was 17 years ago. I started out actually in graphic design, working for advertising companies. And then I took a class in college on how to sculpt and found out how to make things myself out of clay and plaster. And that's sort of how I started. The best thing about my job is I get to have fun making toys, especially toys of things I like. To get to where I am in production, I had to go through a lot of courses in architecture. I had to learn how to read a scale, I had to learn how to measure, and I had to learn mathematics. No matter how many times you do it, you have the same feeling once you're done. It's satisfaction. If I can design an apartment, maybe someday I could design a movie set. All right, this is it, people. Quiet. Roll camera. Action. Molto bene! Oh, I love this Pucci. Now that is a slipping. Oh, Eddie, thank you. How can I ever repay you? Tell me, please. Yeah, Eddie, great. That was a great idea to measure all this stuff out. So, if I put the sofa there, then I can put the shelves there. Or, I can put the sofa there, I can put the piano there, I can put the table there. I was glad to help Aunt Rosa measure her apartment, but she still thought I was joking when I told her to make room for a new bed. All right, Eddie, this is getting a little tired, okay? You've gotten enough mileage out of me not having a bed. Oh my God, I can put the sofa there. Then I can look out the window. What do you say, Hector? Mm. Aunt Rosa was having trouble deciding where everything should go. Maybe she needed help from a pro. My name is Lynn Parkinson, I'm an interior designer. An interior designer helps to create a comfortable living space. So let me show you what I've done with this house. When I walk into a room, I can tell how a room should be arranged and what people should do to make it a space that they don't want to leave. An interior designer has to know all about carpeting, wood, wall covering, art, metals, paints. So you have to be able to draw plans, you have to be able to read plans. You have to know the size of the wall so you know how much paint to buy. If you put wallpaper on the wall, you have to measure the walls so that you know how much wallpaper you have to buy. And with every piece of furniture, you know the width, you know the height, you know the depth, whether it's the tables, the sofa, the chairs, the lamps, you know exactly what's going to fit. The only thing that was in this room when we started was the fireplace and the television. We just spoke with the family and they said we'd like to have it comfortable and maintenance free so the family could enjoy it. The use of the room is what dictates how we furnish the room. We started with no furniture in it. We measure the width and the length of the room and we measure all the ceilings. We did several little sketches and then we came up with what we felt the best design. If it works on paper, then it works in the room. I can put the piano there and the shelves there. I told Aunt Rosa to be sure to save room for her new bed. Eddie, nobody's gonna give me a free bed. <laughs> and nobody's gonna put Hector on TV. You, Rosa? That's me. What, wait, what, what's the... Uh... We got a gift for you from the Snooze Right Mattress Company. Compliments of some TV director named Francois Montage. <laughs> Where do you want it? Over there. So Francois kept his promise. And everyone couldn't wait to see Hector on TV. Hurry the ground. We'll be right back. <laughs> like a dog all day long. And when you
you get home, you're tired. Hey, I touch you on TV. You want to work like a dog? Then why not sleep like a dog on a soft yet firm mattress by the Snooze Ride Hector? Mattress Company? <laughs> yes, Hector. My baby's on TV. <laughs> Anyway, Aunt Rose is all settled in her new apartment. And Hector's sleeping like a king in her new bed. I even thought about rearranging my own room. But I decided to leave it just the way it is. Why change a good thing? Anyway, I guess it's time to close the files. I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a big day. PBS.